Two difficult skills learned from two masters, her mother and her grandfather. Friends in the convent and a solid sense of how to keep her mind intact, despite the constant loneliness. Had she allowed it, Claire's mind could still paint it, shining branch by shining branch, the dark perfect ice under a sky of eye-watering clarity, the young man and the young woman skating there. Clara remembered the warmth of his neck in the cold, his skin on the inch of the bare wrist between her mitten and her cold sleeve. His face had undergone a change, his expression becoming serious. The dark eyebrows gathered together as if he were puzzled or annoyed. In racial respect, she believed that her face would have changed as well, though she couldn't have known that at the time. But when Eamon broke into her world, insisting by his dance and his silence that she make a space for him there, some part of her considered this an act of vandalism. She would never fully forgive the way he trespassed into her tranquility, just as later she would never forgive his determined act of truancy. She felt that if she did not speak of Eamon's departure, and if she made it known to her father and her grandfather that she would not tolerate inquiries, she would soon recover from the overwhelming feelings of loss that attacked her late at night and early in the morning as she lay under the covers of the bed in which, until Eamon had come into her life, she had always slept alone. And still the old man held to his position that the boy would return. She knew that all remained of the texture of his skin was what she could remember with her own senses. Eventually she knew all that would be left of Eamon would be bones and teeth scattered who knew where. Sometimes she dreamt of these remnants, dreamt herself wandering some distant battlefield, having collected his bones which she carried in her arms like a bundle of kindling. But in the dream, she was always searching because although she carried the miraculous package close to her heart, there was always a rib or a thigh bone she couldn't find. Now that she was standing on the soil of the country whose air he had last breathed, in the vicinity of a memorial that would bear his name, the memory of Eamon often came painfully alive in her mind. His sister had no real knowledge of what the return to Vimy had meant for Tamlin. Among the throng had, that had gathered to work on the monument, he would be the only man who carried the battle in his, in his mind, who carried the scars of the battle on his person, and from whom the battle had stolen flesh. Clara had fled from the memory of Eamon's face over and over, his bright eyes and perfect skin now almost two decades younger and more perfect than her own. But she insisted on the ownership of her past. Since the day of his departure, Clara had never once said aloud the name of her young lover. Everything that was right. 